of the Last Supper, the historical significance, the present significance, and what it really entitled, amen, uh, uh, Christ being the blood that was put on the doorpost and then death angel will pass over us, amen, and, uh, uh, you know, and how, he, how he was a bread of life, torn apart for everybody to partake in the world, amen. And tonight I want to talk about the power of the cross. Uh, in 1946, May 21st, in Los Alamos, New Mexico, there was a young scientist, and what he was doing, they just discovered, amen, the use for atomic particles. They have a radioactive chemical, uh, a radioactive uh, material, it's called U-235. Very, very high, amen, you know, and, and so what, what the experiment was, was this young scientist, and he's done this uh, countless of times, he would put these two uh, U-235s two, together, and they will start a chain reaction. The important thing to do is, right before that chain, chain reaction uh, 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 completely takes place, you have to separate them. Because if you don't, there'll be an explosion, and a mass explosion. Well, that's what happened to this individual. He put the two things together, and he knew when exactly he, sh he was going to take him apart with a screwdriver. But unfortunately, that moment that he was going to take it apart with that screwdriver, his screwdriver slipped out of his hand. And before long, the radioactive material was turning the whole room a bluish tint color, and he knew he had to do something. He had one or two choices. He either duck and let the explosion take place, and seven other people were going to die, or he himself would put up, pull apart the, 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 the two... Uh, elements, man, so the, the fusion couldn't take place. Well, he did. He, he pulled them apart. But in doing that, absorbed every inch of that radiation. And as they were going to the hospital, he looks over to his, to his friend and goes, you'll be just fine. For me, I'm not going to make it. Nine days later, he died. And if you know anything about radioactive birth and radioactive death, it's a it's an agonizing death because that radioactive poison is literally burning your insides. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's no kind of chemical that you can drink. There's no amount of morphine that you can take. There's no amount of painkiller known to man that can help you with that pain. So you're literally, bit by bit, day by day, burning from the inside out. And it took him about nine days, I believe, to finally die. But the course of the action that he did was seven people got to live. And a same with our, we look at our, ourselves, amen, you know, in, in, uh, uh, in, in 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we may die to sin. He took all our sin. He took all our hardships, he took all our iniquities and put it upon himself that he became that sin offering for us. Another illustration way back in there was a, uh, a young man and uh, uh, he was at the church with his mom and the pastor was preaching a dynamite service on the crucifixion on the cross and it touched this boy so dearly that he started to weep and every time the pastor would uh, make a point about the crucifixion, he'd weep, he'd literally and, and, and sincerely weep. But lo and behold, the mom turns over to him and says, quiet down. Don't take it so seriously. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the world today? Don't take God too seriously. You go to church too much. What's with you in those hallelujahs? What's happening? Why, why is it that you don't drink anymore? Why is it that you don't get high anymore? Why is it that you don't sleep around anymore? Why is it that you do, you know, why is it that, that you no longer hang out with us? Why, what, what happened? What took place? Oh man, I got saved. Oh, you know what? You're taking that too seriously. Uh -oh. <clears throat> and we'll even, I don't even hear phrases like, well, Jesus made wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Jesus went to feast, went to parties. 
You know, hey, we understand. We're not going to force anything out of you. He says, you don't understand. You know, for my benefit. I remember what Christ, what Christ did for me. He didn't sidestep it. He didn't say, you know what, man? I'm about ready to crucify. Oh, Lord, just crucify. Father, just crucify one hand. Just crucify one hand. We can go, amen, and think we can live the way we want and then dare look at the cross and say, oh, Lord, I believe. The power of the cross, amen. Uh, this individual, that illustration, was actually this young man, and he could not believe it. Don't take God too seriously. Don't take it, you're too, taking this too seriously. See, the cross should compel us with gratitude. We should look upon the cross. We should look upon that day. We should look upon that time, man, and say, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for doing what you did. Thank you for saving my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me from the pit of hell. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Amen. I love what, what Brother Mikey said, man. Man, those things that happened to me, they happened to me. I'm glad they happened to me because now I am what I am. But you know, you wouldn't believe in how many people, amen, are on the same boat as that. And then when you go over to them and say, you don't have to do that, Christ is the answer. They look at you like, oh, no. Because right away, everybody wants to think of it as a religion. Where you walk around all day with your hands folded and you hum. People that don't live, uh, don't live a, Christian, uh, a Christian life never know what the life is about. Right. The excitement that comes with it, the day-to-day -day battle that comes with it, yeah. the mind trips, amen, because the enemy is real, amen, uh, and he's out to kill, steal, and destroy. And I'll tell you one thing, friend of mine, man, every waking moment of every single day, you should wake up, first thing, man, thank you, Lord, for waking me up. And when you go to bed, it should be God, I mean, you know, another day. Thank you, Lord, keep me as I walk, as I, as I nap, as I sleep, or whatever it is, amen. I remember I was in this, uh, uh, when I used to work in, uh, in Hollywood, for uh, an editing company, there was this guy from FedEx, big brother, man, and, and, you know, and, and he found out I was saved, and he invited me, hey, what do you do? Well, you know, well, uh, I'm involved in the worship ministry, man, so am I, oh, great. And uh, I gave him a, a lyric, I said, man, do something with this, I'm one day closer to him. Now I wish I would just remember what he was saying, because he came back about two days later, snapping his fingers, I got it. I can't sing, because I don't remember, but I remember that, so I'm one day closer to him. Ooh. I'm one day closer to him. Come on. Yes. One day closer. If, if, if I die, you know, my, if my time is up, and each day I say to myself, I want, and I thank you, Lord, for each day. We, uh, we had a, uh, my buddies and I had this buddy, he, he, he had a, he took a big, uh, uh, the flower jars, you know, the big, the tall ones. And he figured it out about so many number of marbles in a man's lifetime. And he was about, maybe, when he started, he was about 30, 35, and he had children already. So, let's just say for the sake of him, he had 80 marbles there. Mm. That was his life, 80 marbles. One marble a day. And he said, man, uh, every time he put, he, every time the day's over, he would put one, the, one, take one of the full jar and put it in the empty jar. Every day he did that. And then, all of a sudden, man, he just took it for granted. He was just doing it. But he turned one day and he looked back. And man, he said, man, there were 31, 35 marbles in that jar. And it was this tall, amen. And I looked at that and I said, that's how many days either I wasted yeah. or I lived life. How many of us, amen, waste time worrying about things we cannot control yeah. and cursing God because we can't control it? How many of those days, I wonder, man, when you were looking at it, how many days did you give to the Lord? How many days were you happy? How many days? Because it, our life is but a vapor. Come on, yes. man. Man, that's what God says. Amen. One minute is here, the next minute is gone. Yes. You know, I, I, the way I wanted to die, I was afraid of to die in my sleep. So when people would stand and watch, I would ask them, hey, man, hey, Roberts, come and check up on me at about 2 o'clock in the morning. I go, why? He goes, why? Because I just want you to make sure I'm breathing. He said, get the heck out of here, man. You know, what do you want me to do? Put a mirror underneath your nose? Hey, well, you hear me snoring. You know, you know, no, I, it's, I, he goes, why? He goes, I'm, I'm, tired, I'm tired of, uh, I'm, I'm afraid of dying in my sleep. So I want to die in the blaze of glory. I want to die with my shoes on. I want to die with a grenade in one hand, man, and my MP5, man, and my, you know, my 
My itchy came in. It, 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 it just go out massive. Yeah. And he looked at me and said, yeah, you're, you're insane. <laughs> but I was afraid to die. I was afraid to die in my sleep. Amen. But this individual was counting the days. And I wonder, amen, if we count the days, how many of those days did we live, live free? Truly free. Yeah. Because God, I mean, the, the Bible says the truth is such a free. Right? The truth. What the truth? The truth is God. I am the way the truth and the life. So if we know the truth, and he says he never leaves us, nor forsake us. He says he'll supply our needs. He does it. He says that maybe he'll, he'll always be there. How many days did we spend not one ounce of gratitude? Mm. Yeah. Man. Not one time did we thank him. No. Not one time did we say, Lord, I thank you, because your death made it possible for me to spend eternity with you. Your death, amen, uh, may put away my sin, amen, uh, and, and wash me by my, by my iniquity, amen, and, and I thank you. How often do we thank God? Yes. Come on. There was a, 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 an accident in Lake Michigan. It is, was a, if, if, do you know what a, the, the sidewinder steamboat are, you know, the big wheels? Okay, you know, there's one, there's, the paddle was in the back, and then the side one, there's like two of the sides. Anyway, there were, just, there were two of them that actually collided. And about 200, about three, uh, 393 passengers were on board. Yeah. On board. Yeah. 279 drowned. Huh? But there was a man named Edward Spencer, a young man, a, a young boy actually, seeing the situation of like he plunged into the lake and swam and helped the drowning people, amen. He brought back, uh, let me see if I can remember this. He, yeah, I wrote it down. He brought back to safety, amen, about 17 people. Mm. 17. He was going to go back for more, but he got so weary that he collapsed. The nerves on his legs were so completely destroyed that he could never walk again. He was an invalid in a wheelchair. He was that for the rest of his life. He was a young man when that happened because on his 18th birthday, 18th birthday, he was already confined in a wheelchair. They asked him, what was the most vivid memory of that dreadful day? And he replied, not one of the 17 ever came back and thanked me. Damn. Oh, hey. wow. Not one of the 17 came back. Yeah. Were they not 10 lepers? Were they not 10 of you? Come on, yeah. Yet the Samaritan, this young man came back and you're the only one that thanked me? Yeah. We, you're the only one that thank me out, out of all of them, and those are the people that are supposed to know me, but you, man, an outsider comes and, 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 and thanks me. Mm -hmm. You see, there, there's things, there's times, church, where we need to understand, man, that thankfulness, man, showing gratitude to God is important. Yes, amen. Because you acknowledge the things that, he's did, that he did for you, the most monumental thing. Because the word of God says, man, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. That's how he showed his love for us. Amen. We have to, man, while we were cussing and fussing and doing our own thing, God knew way in advance, way in the future, way ahead, that one day there is going to be a room full of people in the Antelope Valley, amen, of uh, New Hope Ministries, that uh, all oh, those people that are going to need us, uh, a Savior. Yes, amen. amen. He began to explain, amen, to the disciples what we must do, what he must do. So, you know, it should compel us to gratitude. Amen. The cross should compel us also to self-denial. Yes. Watch out, here we go. Not going to be good. Come on. Oh. 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 Thanks for the warning. That's it. I'm done. No more. <laughs> in Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 and 27, if you want to read it just for a second time, I want to go on, but... He tells his disciples what's going to happen, what was going to happen, what was going to take place. And Peter says, man, you know, that's not going to happen to you. He said, you know what, Peter, you don't know what you're talking about. He says, hey, I will never let them say, Peter, you know, and, and, and again, I'm paraphrasing because I believe that's what the, the, the conversation went. You know, Peter was like, man, they ain't going to happen to you. They ain't going to let that happen to you. I got your back. Don't worry about it. Peter, be quiet, man. You don't even know what you're talking about. You go, oh, no, no, they may run. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, hey, them guys will run. Me, I'm sticking with you side by side. <coughs> you and me. Mm -hmm. huh? I don't know. It's not to the hubcaps fall off. It's until the ribs break down. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Lord. <laughs> and he rebuked him, man. Get behind me, Satan. Yes, yes. 
Because you're talking nonsense. You're talking, yeah. man, you're, you're, I mean, this is what I said was going to happen. You're just talking nonsense. And we all know what happened to Peter. Amen. Uh, man, he denied Christ before the rooster crow. Yeah. And he remembered. Not only did he remember, I mean, one, one gospel said that he saw him. And when they both heard the rooster crow, they looked at each other. Oh, no. Can you imagine being on the cross? Amen. <laughs> Lord, man, I love you, God. I love you, Lord. You know, Sister Jenny said, man, I, I just want to thank him. I just want, I just want to tell him I love him. I just want to thank him. I just want, to, I just want him to know what he knows whenever we do his will. Yes. He knows when we deny ourselves. Take up our cross. Amen. When we look at the cross, we see a supreme example of self-denial. Jesus didn't want to go, man. He was, he was praying in the garden of the city. He thought it would be impossible that this cup passed from me. Nevertheless, Father, let your will be done and not mine. You know, I, I've, I've had times, man, you know, because, and, and, and listen, if you're, if you're going to follow your calling, be realistic. Because understand, man, when the going gets tough, it's going to be between you and God. Yes. My wife can't help me. Yep. My children can't help me. My grandchildren can't help me. The ushers can't help me. You can't help me. I have to be sure that what God is saying, man, this is a calling from me. Why? Because when it's a calling from God, you can't shake it. Yep. You can try. And I've tried, ladies and gentlemen, in the jury. But God will give me dreams and say, no, this is what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. And I become like Moses. I'm not going to speak more. I become, I, mean, man, I, I come up with these excuses. I come up with these, you know, uh, man, I think, you, I think you got the wrong person, man. I think you got the wrong person, man. You, you, you don't understand. I'm not that brilliant. Mm. I, I, I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm not that, you know, again, I, I go really, I'm not that brave. I'm not that tall. Come on. I'm not that skinny. <laughs> I am that bald. No. <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's one of these things, church, man. But in the, when I look upon the cross and, and I look upon my Savior there, if I can do this for you, can you at least do this for me? I heard of one missionary family, he went to Africa, amen, and he lived among the huts and amongst everything, amongst the, the, the villages, amongst the dirt roads, no electricity, amen, bugs flying everywhere. His wife passed away and his son, son was, it was really, no, his son got really, really sick and they asked him, man, you must have really loved God. And he looks at the individual who made that statement and says, I'm no heathen, I'm an idiot. You know, I mean, I looked at my son and he's ill. You don't think that that affects me? But can we, can we, can you and I, can we, this is what he was saying, can we for once do something we don't want to do for the sake of God, Amen. for the sake of Jesus, mm -hmm. for the sake of the people, because he did that one very important thing for us that yeah. saved us? Come on. Yeah. Sometimes you find it uncomfortable for doing little things as fast as Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I was praying. I was reading. Man, I'm just getting a hold of God. I'm being nice to someone. Uh oh. Was driving, man. Uh, uh, I think I had pulled over because, uh, uh, oh, I went to get some water, amen. And, you know, somebody said, yeah, can, can you, are you hungry? He said, yeah, wait here. I went and got him something to eat right here. He goes, oh, thank you, kind sir. <laughs> kind sir, man, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 the reason why I said that is because I really that when, when, when that individual said thank you, it, it made me really good. It made, you know, and, and, and the thing is that when I thank God, it makes him good. But when I denied myself, because I was hungry, yo, <laughs> you know, but I bought that not for myself, but for them. Yes. Yes. Here, yes. when you deny yourself, when you have that, because of our supreme example, when men of Christ denying himself. When we look at the cross, we have to understand that there is self-denial. Before I got saved, I had big dreams of myself, for myself. <laughs> I wanted to open up the bar. I found a location. Uptown, amen, Wilshire Boulevard, where all the high-rises are, where all those business people are now. We'll love to take a drink before they go home. <laughs> 
There used to be a, a, a little restaurant, nightclub, bar thing called the Red Onion. Oh. Yeah, that was just a name. They didn't serve it. Bruce. But it was a, it was, you know, and, and I said, man, I can do that. But I got saved, amen. <laughs> and it just didn't feel right, amen. But there are things that, you know, we have to walk man, in a way where, you know, we're putting God first. It's time to start putting God's will ahead of our own. See, we need to put a check, amen, in, my, in our priorities, amen, because they've been, it, it's been, you know, well, quite frankly, amen, it's been, you know, it's been too long. And we should deny ourselves, amen. How important is that? Well, let me give you another illustration, amen. In, in San Antonio, amen, Texas, the, the weather outside was about 101. Well, these people, amen, were, were walking in the, in the parking lot where they noticed uh, uh, the ten, a 10-month-year-old child, little girl, was in the car with the windows rolled up. Hmm? And they looked at this individual, they looked at the, they were looking at the, the, it was a mom and the aunt. And when they realized that they left their 10-month-old baby in the car, they were frantic. But they also locked their keys in the car. Oh. So now they're trying to get the car window open, they're trying to use handrails and everything. And this individual, this man came, amen, and I wrote his name down because I thought it was pretty good, Fred Ariola. He came by, he was a tow truck driver, he came by, saw the commotion, saw the little baby, the 10 month old baby, already turning people purple, already foaming at the mouth. So he gets him in a, 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 a little hammer, he gets a wrench, and he smashes the window. He smashes the window, amen, and, and man, it unlocks the door, he pulls, a, pulls a, the, the child out, amen, and man, puts some cold water on the body so she can start cooling down. The kicker of that is, the mother, the owner of the car, was angry at Fred for breaking the window. <laughs> but isn't that sometimes the way we look at things? We get mad because we want to do our own thing. Why do I have to do that? Why do I have to go there? Why, why do I have to? Why, why, why is this and why is that? No, Lord, okay, I don't want to do that. You know, when, when we go to other churches, when we go to overseas churches, man, it's exciting, it's great, it's, man, it's, it's pumped up. When you start going there, you're excited, man, you know, man, you're flexing like arms, man. Watch out, man, you're going to go. I've been it up, fast it up, man, I'm going, let's go. Praise the house. But the battle doesn't stop over there, man. When you come back, be ready for a counterattack. And the only way you can combat that counterattack is that you deny yourself and say, man, I need to go fast. Which has been on the fast, I know, but I need to go on because now I see coming, the enemy coming. And I have to get a hold of God. I have to remember, amen, that I'm just a man. I have to remember, but you know what, that the enemy is still around and that he's still killing, stealing, destroying. And I have to get my defenses up because those are the times, amen, where, man, and if, you, if you've got with us and you help me pray, you know it's draining. The first time that we went to Mexico, we went to Guanajuato, man, it was just my wife and I. One church, man, had over 100 people. The other church had over, man, close to 200. And do you know that every single one of them came up to the altar? It felt like. <laughs> it felt like. And they did not leave until they were prayed for. No air conditioning. One church had one entrance and one exit. That was the back door. Fans were going everywhere. You know the oscillating fans? I tried to be cool. I didn't want anybody to know I was hogging the air and I was following it around. <laughs> you know, trying to free. <laughs> but it's self denial. When we went to Honduras, amen, there was this lady that, you know, we, we, it was a dirt road, the first church we went to. Let me share this story with you, the first church we went to today. If I haven't shared it, I'm sharing it anyway. But when we went there, the pastor who had invited us to Honduras, Man, he says, okay, we'll go to this one church. That's all he said to us. We'll go to this one church. And we're like, okay, great. And we went to the church. And, and, and you know, and, and, and he, he looked nervous. He looked really nervous. And we thought, well, that's okay. Of course he's nervous, man. We're about ready to have a Bible here, man. These people don't know me. They don't know what I'm about. 
they're not going to know how to accept you. So of course he's nervous. Hey, we're nervous. We start praying. We start praying. And that's before we went to the other to the church to pray again. And we went to the church and prayed. And, and so, man, and this, this lady comes, man, and, and it's a dirt road. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's cobblestones, it's dirt. And this one lady came, and she had high heels on. Stilettos. Fierce. She's walking in. I said, man, I'm over there. Is she going to fall? She's like, well, don't make her fall. <laughs> you know, and, and here we are in church. And, and, and uh, so my, my, my plan was to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, my son, Anthony, give a testimony. Then uh, Pastor Mondo, you know, with us, give a testimony. And then I, I, would, uh, I would preach it's exactly how that happened. Then the hand of God moved around that place. I mean, the testimonies were awesome, man. People were like, wow, couldn't, couldn't believe it. And, uh, and all said and done, we went, and the pastor, at the end of the day, went, <laughs> I go, yeah, right? He goes, no, You're, let me tell you, I, don't, I didn't even know if they wanted, if they were going to allow you to preach. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> what? I thought you set it up. No, no. Well, you know what? I want, I want to bring, but. Well, they don't, they don't allow people with long hair and beards to preach or to give a testimony. And there's my son. <laughs> Tore it up, man. People are like, wow, man. They also don't allow people with tattoos. And there goes Pastor Mama. <laughs> Tore it up. <laughs> and here I come, a combination of both. I got a beard and a little bit of hair. Amen. <laughs> I had one tattoo that I just scribbled so I wouldn't look oh, so bad. <laughs> but here, you know, the hand of God moved. And listen to me, man, church, when we went to Honduras, man, those of you that went with me, they squeezed us like a lemon. Mm -hmm. They took us for everything we got. And they had only one convenience store that was open late at night for us to go get something to eat. The balas? Oh, yeah. Had so much of those, man, like, never again. <laughs> but the thing is, church, you know, we have to deny ourselves. But when we did, we saw the hand of God move. The cross should compel you to deny yourself. Should compel you to say, man, God, you did that for me. I know I could do this for you. And usually, not usually, all the time, God's asking you to do something that is not impossible to you. See, the reason why at times it may be difficult, because he still wants to show off his power through you. He still wants you to know that he's God and he's going to pull it through. Now, I, I love that saying. He doesn't, he doesn't qual call to qualify. He qualifies the call. Amen. So if you're ever you know, in that place where you're like, you know what, I'm wrong. Deny yourself. Pray a little bit more. Hey, fast a little bit more. Give a hold of God. Man, witness a little bit more. Come out, amen, you know, this time and, 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 and do more for God. Deny yourself. God will truly bless you for that. Amen. amen. The third one, amen, is you compel, to, compel us to have a poverty spirit. Don't stop at poverty, okay? It's a poverty spirit. Come on. You know, because God said, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 5, 3. The poor in spirit is to acknowledge the spiritual poverty. In other words, man, spiritual poverty means you can't do this by yourself. Brother Mike was saying, now here I am, I used to sleep there, but now I'm asking for handouts. Because I couldn't make it. See, I can't make it, I can't make it on my own. I need help, and I have to recognize that I'm spiritually poor. Because, man, I cannot do this on my own. I cannot get up day in and day out. I cannot, you know, man, uh, think of sermons, man, uh, for twice a week, sometimes three times a week. I can't think of sermons, amen, uh, you know, on my own, man. Well, okay, you got invited to this church. What are you going to preach on? Got to get a hold of my, got to get the mind God, amen, and tell them sometimes, man, it's something that, that I've already had. Sometimes it's something, man, that is new, and there I am, man, racking my brain, trying to say, well, which way do you want me to go with this? Hurry up! I'm taking my time, don't worry. See, the power of the Spirit means just that, that we cannot do this walk on our own. We cannot be made Christians on our own account. Yeah. Try being nice. Now, try being nice when your significant other got you mad. Try being nice and work for a school or at the market 
or even amen at Walmart, uh, uh, Walmart when you when, when this lady's dog got into your face, amen. And now you want to know, like, amen. You know, you you, you try, you know, you, you can't. We need God's help. Amen. That's why the Lord says, "Man, if I be lifted up, if my name be lifted up, and we lift up Christ, how do we do that? When we, man, when we have a heart of gratitude, when we deny ourselves, when we are the Lord, I can't do it. Man, how are you doing this? All through God, on the whole, all through God. Yes. People come and say, "That was a great sermon." Man, thank the Lord. I'm not being religious. Thank God. <laughs> You know, we have had places, man, man, hey, man, come here. I've had people come, how long have you been playing? I, I don't know, man. I just mess with it. I'm not, I'm not a musician per se. I just know how to play without nothing. Sure. <laughs> you know, well, you know, like, you're really good. Oh, thank you, thank you. And I go, man, thank you, Lord. I never learned how to play any of these instruments until after I got saved. Just the pastor at that time said, man, we need a drummer. And I, I thought he wanted me to help him pray for a drummer. <laughs> So I said, well, praise the Lord, Pastor. Yeah, we need a drummer. We'll get a drummer. That's what we'll get a drummer. In Jesus' name, we'll get a drummer. And he looks at me and says, oh, yeah, we're going to get a drummer. <laughs> we're going to get a drummer. Yes, we're going to get a drummer. No, you're a drummer. Yeah. Yeah. And I told you, hey, amen, the first time I played, man, they said, okay, have a few song service, cut, take them out. <laughs> Then after that, man, we need a bass player. I already know. Okay, I got it. And after that, we need a guitar. Right, I got it. I'll learn it, you know. And, man, and listen, man, it took some time because he, back then it was like, hey, learn this song tonight and we're going to play it tomorrow. How's that possible? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, but when you when you come to a place, amen, where you're spiritually poor, and the Lord of God says in 5 3 in Matthew, amen, it says, for there's the kingdom of heaven. Because you lean more on God. Yeah. When Jacob fought, amen, the, 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 the angel, amen, he didn't let him go until he said, man, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Mm -hmm. How did he bless him, man? He took his joint out of his socket. Yeah, how is that a blessing, Lord? <laughs> <laughs> but from now on, when you walk the way you walk, you're going to know that it was me that did it, and you're going to rely on me. You're going to rely on me. Everything that you do from now on, I need you to rely on me. I need you to, and, and I've heard pastors, man, when they, when they got to the field, man, they'll, they'll, they'll tell the Lord, the day I need to buy my own clothes, buy my own shoes, pay for my own food, pay for my own, pay for my own mortgage or rent, pay for my car, is the day I'm going to quit the ministry. And do you know that they have never, never had to pay for because God always provided. Amen. But well, why? Because, man, they're telling the Lord, I can't do this without you. I can't do this without you. No. None of us can be here without God. Come on. We can say that we're all good. We can say we can walk and walk, man. You know, we can talk and talk, amen. But when it comes down to it, man, can you walk it? Not without God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a branch Lord of mine. Without me, you can do nothing. Yeah. Now, that may sound a little bit harsh, but what you see, it was, it was, he was really saying, if you abide in me and I abide in you, I'll give you the desires of your heart. But understand, when you abide in me, I'm working through you. Yep. So that me abiding in me and being clinging on to me, me being set together. If we are the branches and he is the vine, and when we have to lean on him, where do we have to lean on him from? Well, if you know anything about plants, it comes from the roots all the way up, amen, through the through the, 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 the trunk, and when it gets down to the vines, amen, and then it distributes out throughout the others. See, if you want to be fed of God, amen, then we need to know, man, that we are poor in spirit, and we need you. We need you. And, you know, I, I told uh, 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 my brother, my brother, when, when I got married, you know, I was talking to him, man, he goes, hey, man, you pulled up, man, uh, Man, congratulations, everybody. yeah. yeah. You know, but man, I tell you what. Uh, next time, let us know way in advance. And, and, I, and, I, go, and, I, and I, said, I said, okay. And I took about three steps of wait next time. Yeah. <laughs> man, hold on, man. How long do you think this is gonna last? <laughs> I want this to last for forever, man. You know, I'm not like, doing no next time, brother. <laughs> you know, I, 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 but I, I can't. I couldn't do it. We are so different. 
I mean, we, I, to, to, to this day, when people find out, you know, where she came from and where I came from, they're scratching their heads. How did that happen? I said, well, we met in church. Oh, did you not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we met in church, man. We didn't know each other, man. You know, it wasn't the church. Yeah. You know, when my friends found out, man, you know, yeah, man, we're getting married. And said, man, they were like, oh, great, who is she? And this and that. And, you know, I, 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 I can tell that they were shocked. <laughs> You know, because they were thinking, man, you know, really? <laughs> See, that's great, man. <laughs> but I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't work, I can't work, I can't be that, that, that individual that I need to be without God. I can't. I can't be a pastor without God. I can't be a man of God without God. Otherwise, I wouldn't be called a man of God. <laughs> it has to be a man in that spot where we have that poverty mentality, spiritually, spiritually. And we have to understand, church, amen, that the day that we think that we're spiritually filled and spiritually fat, and that we don't need Christ anymore. Pastor, did that ever happen? <laughs> yes, but it's a lie. And I'll tell you what I mean. I've seen people come into men's homes, amen, amen. And think they, they were be, just because they were sober for 30 days that they didn't need God anymore. Mm -hmm. Just because they were sober. They got a free haircut, they got some clothes, they smell better. <laughs> you know, taking care of that one tooth. Yeah, yeah. Brushing the tooth. You know, actually, you know, with the, the term toothbrush, not teeth brush, toothbrush. <laughs> they're taking care of that tooth. And they're taking that one long strand of hair. Put all kinds of gel in it, you know, have it torn around. 30 days later, amen. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can be like that. Yeah, I don't need this anymore. And they take off. Two weeks later, they're worse than when they were when they came in. Yeah. Worse. There was a, a homeless man, amen, when we had a church in Sunset. Uh, his name was uh, Leon, Leon, amen. Homeless guy. You know, hair off, as a dreadlocks, man, because he had cold, amen. God threw a men's home, man, and shaved him up, man. He was a really handsome man. But he only lasted about three weeks. He was sober for about three weeks. He got his mind together, man, and went back. Last time I see him, he would walk out walking the street. And every now and then, he would stop and shake. And then he'd keep walking. And I'm like, oh, man, you mean come, come back to the men's home. And you just walk away. We cannot do this. We have to have, amen, uh, that mentality of the tax collector when he went into the, uh, uh, to the temple to pray. And the Pharisee was there. Because in Romans 12, uh, 3.12, it says, there's not one that does, who does good. Not one. And of course, 3.23, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. One more, Luke 5.8, Peter said to Jesus, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. When the public and even in the tax, and, and when, when, when the Pharisee and the, and the public and the tax collector came to came to the church to pray, man, the Bible says that the Pharisee stood up and he started comparing himself to other people. See, that's when you know when you when you're not spiritually poor, man. That's when you know, man, you you, you filled up your spirit with pride. Yeah, Jesus. Because now you're looking down at individual and saying, "Thank God, I'm not like him." Right. Mm. Oh, lo and behold, brother, sister. That was you. That was you. That was I. And can I stand there and say, thank God I'm not like this. No, thank God, Lord, that you delivered me out of that. Yeah, now let me tell this man, look, what you're going through, I went through. I went through. You know, one thing that I really, you know,